Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to show you how dark this rock is going to be once I seal it so that you guys don't think I've done something and like edited out and created a whole different rock. It's not going to look like this. When it's done, it's going to be much darker. So I have always worried about what tutorials to put out and you know, that's why there isn't a whole lot of them because I'm always creating generally the same kind of stuff. So um, if I come up with something new, that's great. But if not, I'm just like getting better at all the other stuff I've already done. So, um, so for instance, I make a lot of dragonflies because I love making them. They make me happy. Um, so this one is going to have a dragonfly on it, but it's also going to have some beautiful cherry blossoms. Um, so what I've done is I've taken some dark brown, uh, and I've sketched on some little branches and there's going to be uh, a large flower right out front, a large blossom. And then there's going to be a couple of other little ones. So they're going to be like back in the background a little bit. Um, now, each flower has five petals and they're shaped like a chubby diamond. If you guys watched my recent tutorial, um, I did mention chubby diamonds. So they look like diamonds, only they got curves, not points. They're kind of chubby and I like them. <laughs> so it's the best way for me to explain in Rachel's Rocks terms instead of technical terms. So I am making sure to use a little blending brush. It's kind of like a sponge. Um, I have a tutorial for a blending brush in my video list as well as in the description of this video. Uh, this one is going to have a little bit of everything in it. Um, but because my dark is my dark, my rock is going to be so dark. Uh, I'm making sure to start off with really white flowers. Okay. So I'm going to do like three coats of white on top of these flowers. Once they're dry, um, let them dry in between each coat. That way, uh, I don't lose any of my color when this rock darkens up at the end. So I have to make sure I have a nice bright white canvas or primed primed background, as you can see. Um, so I'm, I want to make sure that we can still see the beauty of our beautiful Lake Superior stone that we're painting on. I want to appreciate that background because it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so I'm going to put something uh, simple. So a couple of cherry blossoms and then a small chrome uh, dragonfly. So I am going to be using techniques that I've used across the years on my YouTube channel, uh, things that you guys have seen me do before. And if you're new, it might be new tips and tricks for you. So I'm going to be using a little bit of everything when it comes to media, uh, not just acrylic paint, but I'll be using watercolors. I will also be using um, some nail polish stuff, which is a gel top coat, a no wipe top coat that you need a UV light to cure. Um, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You can find some nice acrylic glitter paint or even uh, color shifting metallic paints that are uh, available at Michael's or at your local craft store. Um, you don't have to use the same stuff I'm using, but if you want yours to look like mine, I just want to show you how I did it. That way, if you want to try it yourself, you can. It's completely up to you. So I've got some nice bright petals now on my cherry blossoms. I'm going to be uh, using a very, very light baby pink and some berry wine, possibly a little bit of magenta, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, but wait until your white flowers are completely dry before you start adding color. Also, if you're uh, unsure of what paint colors I'm using because it goes so quickly, click on the link, uh, click on the description uh, below this video and it will tell you everything I've used, um, where you can find it, and the colors of paint that I'm using as well as my resin tutorial and um, my fine lining brush tutorial as well. I use my fine liner in every tutorial. So I'm starting off with baby pink and then I'm using a little bit of berry wine in the center and I'm using a little blending brush uh, to blend that out a little bit. Uh, I just want to kind of soften the pink 
and soften the berry wine. I don't want it to be too bold and I want to make sure I blend it really, really good. So I've switched to a sponge because my flour is a little bit bigger so I can use one of my smaller sponges in it to get that color that I want. But it's going to be lighter out at the edges of the petals and darker in the center. That's the best way for me to explain it. So once you have it all uh, the color that you want it to, it's time to go in and separate those petals a little bit. So I'm just taking my fine lining brush and some black acrylic paint and I'm going around the outside edges to make sure they're nice and clean and that I haven't sponged all over the place because um, I want to keep a nice clean line there. I will be using gold today, uh, which is, you know, I'm famous for my gold, I think. <laughs> if, if, if I could ever be famous, it would be for my use of gold. <laughs> there we go. Um, so there will be gold. There will be glitter. There will be shine. And it will make you happy to see the finished product. <laughs> so I've done it with each flower. I didn't want to waste your time and uh, do it with every one in front of you. So I've, I've done each flower, blended it the color I wanted to, and I've put a black dot with a dotting tool in the center of each flower. I've outlined each flower as well. Um, and now I'm using one of my homemade um, watercolors, and it's like a glittery pink. It looks white and shiny, but it's actually, when you shift it, there's some pink there. So it leaves like a very subtle uh, glitter on those petals and it's very eye-catching. You won't be able to see it um, like I can until I resin it and show it to you at the end, but there is some glitter there and I absolutely love it. It's optional, um, but you know me with glitter and gold. <laughs> this is going to look even more glittery once it's sealed with resin, but that's what it's going to look like. I'm going to put it on each flower, make sure each one has its own little bit of glitter. And if you find that I'm going way too fast for you, you can definitely slow down the video on your YouTube. Um, but please remember, I might sound like a robot when you slow me down. And there's actually a new option here in my editing. So if you slow it down, I will sound like this, and it's quite scary. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> so now I'm bringing out the gold. It's Mayan gold from Folk Art, and I'm just making sure that I can still see my black outline. I'm going just on the inside of the black outline that I've already done, although I will be going around everything again with my black liner because um, I want to make sure it's all clean and everything after all. I will also be putting a little bit of gold onto the branches, but I'm not going to go overboard. I just want to be able to see an outline, um, but I will also be using black to outline afterwards. So this is a tedious process, just kind of clean, cleans things up for you. Um, and if you don't want to outline with black as well, if you just like the gold, that's completely up to you. You don't even have to outline it if you don't want to. I just find it looks finished when I do that. <laughs> but each artist has their own taste and you get to make your own decisions on what you want to do. So I'm bringing in that gold just to outline our plain brown branches. Nothing, nothing special about them. Really simple. You can put little cherry blossom buds here and there if you want to add some more to it. Um, I've created this stone many times and you've probably seen it on one of my social media feeds, uh, whether it's Pinterest or interest, uh, interest, Pinterest or interest, <laughs> Instagram uh, or Facebook. And yeah, usually I'm painting the same types of things because they make me happy. Um, but yeah. I like to put these kinds of things in my shop because so many people love them, um, but I end up not doing a tutorial because I think you guys are going to be bored. But at the same time, I've just realized that I could have a lot more videos out there for you um, like this that you've maybe seen before, um, but you didn't know how I did it and you didn't know what 
tips and tricks I used in order to create this little piece of magic. Um, so I've decided I'm going to start sharing more often my tutorials. Um, even if you guys have seen them, I might have changed it up slightly or, or tried something new with it. Um, but usually in my rocks, there's a little bit of everything. So you get to learn all sorts of stuff in each one of my paintings. And I'm silly for not recording it more often so that I can share it with you guys. So you might see some more tutorials coming out on my channel. I'm not going to worry so much about whether you guys have seen a dragonfly before, or whether you guys have seen a cherry blossom before. Um, I really just want to share with you. So there you go. <laughs> so what I did there was I put some little berry wine hairs coming out of the flowers um, and then on the ends of all those little hairs I put a little dot with a dotting tool so that gave us the center of our cherry blossoms now I'm using gold um, you can definitely sketch it on using like a chalk pencil or even just plain pencil depending on what you're working on a light colored rock you can see pencil really well um, but I'm I'm winging it I'm going in there being a daredevil and I'm just using the gold paint right on top of our beautiful flowers so let's hope I don't mess up because <laughs> I really don't know if I'd be able to fix it if I do so I want to keep my wings clear so I just want to do the outline of the wings and uh, but I want to fill in the body in black so Wherever you want to put your dragonfly, if you want to put two smaller ones, um, if you don't want a dragonfly, that's totally up to you, but I love dragonflies, so, <laughs> and they go well with cherry blossoms, I really think they look pretty, um, and I'm going to use all different techniques once again, so this one is painted black first, we're going to let the gold dry, we're going to let the black dry so that we can work over top of that. Um, there's many ways to do clear wings on your dragonfly. Uh, you can just use glitter. You can just use like a dragonfly glaze, which is from folk art. It's like an iridescent glittery, uh, but you can still see through it and it looks beautiful. You can use that for wings. You can use just a uh, color shifting metallic paint for wings. You can paint them black and use metallic watercolor on them. Um, or you can use metallic watercolor on them the way they are right now, where you can see through them. Uh, just don't put black down first. It's totally up to you. But today I'm going to use nail stuff because I'm a big fan of how it looks when it's done. That, that chrome look, that very glossy, shiny, sparkly look that it gives. Um, you, you decide once you see it finished what, what you want to do. And if you don't have the stuff to do what I've done... Uh, be creative and figure out a way to make it look gorgeous anyway. So I've got everything all set. I've got to let it dry really good. I'm going to outline all the little bits and pieces of my dragonfly. Give it some legs. Make sure it's got all its parts before someone sends me a comment complaining about its missing parts. <laughs> or it has too many parts. Yeah, people do that. I delete them quickly though. <laughs> anyway, I'm using my no wipe top coat now. It's for using for gel nail polish. Uh, it's a clear coat. It's kind of like resin. Um, and it's like a clear top coat that I'm putting over top of this black acrylic paint, which is dry. Make sure it's dry before you do this. Then I'm going to place it under a, U a UV lamp, which is used four nails for gel nail polish. I'm going to put it under it for about a minute and 20 seconds. Okay. Um, don't pay attention to the numbers on here because I've sped it up. Um, but basically now that you've dried that gel top coat, it's not sticky because it's no wipe. Okay. So you get a no wipe top gel coat. Now you can use a variety of things on top of this. It's going to have a couple of different techniques. You can use holographic flakes, you can use um, holographic nail powder. I'm going to be using um, some flakes, which are like a burgundy-ish, orange-ish, shifts to kind of a goldish green. Um, it's really hard for me to explain how pretty it is. 
Um, but basically it's going to go on in a chrome. So it kind of looks like metal. So now we have a metal dragonfly. <laughs> and basically after that's been cured under the light, I can scrub this on using a little makeup brush like a sponge. And it just smudges right on and it only sticks to that uh, shiny top coat. But make sure you get the no wipe top coat that's not sticky once you cure it. You don't want it sticky. So I've got out my handy dandy desk broom <laughs> and I'm sweeping away all the excess glitter and that's what it looks like. All chromey, looks like metal now. So we have that beautiful metal dragonfly. Now same technique on the wings, only this time I'm going to use a nail powder um, and it's like a goldish green. You can get all of these things on Amazon you can find all sorts of chrome powders, mirror powders, holographic powders that are for nails. And you can use them on your rocks because I've been doing this for years. <laughs> and it just gives it a beautiful finish. Um, everything's going to come together. Everything's going to be shiny when I finally seal it at the end. But you're really going to notice how special the wings look and how special the dragonfly looks um, just using these techniques. So I, of course, don't do all of my rock in this. I just kind of mix in all sorts of different mediums uh, on each rock. So it, it gives your eyes something to go towards. There's so many things to look at and so many things to make you smile. So, yeah, that's why I do it. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> this is what it looks like. You can still see through. So you can still see the petals behind there, but it has like this goldish green glimmer to it now. It's like shiny, um, perfect for dragonfly wings, just perfect. Um, you guys have seen me use foil on wings before. This is a whole other technique, might be a little bit easier than using foil because it is a challenge to some. Um, so I'm going to do the other two wings while you guys aren't looking so I don't bore you. Um, but bam, they're done. The magic of, of television. <laughs> well, this is ready to be resined and it's going to spend a couple of days under the resin coat so that I can handle it with my bare hands and show it to you now. <laughs> Look at the background. First of all, let's take a moment to appreciate this gorgeous stone from Lake Superior. Um, you can see the glitter in all the right places. That dragonfly really stands out on top of that background. It looks absolutely gorgeous. It does look like a metal, a metal fly, um, but wow. The contrast between the background and the flowers, everything sparkles in its own special way and has its own special place on the stone. I hope you guys really liked it. I hope you're able to come up with your own creative ideas just from watching this. I love you guys. I appreciate you so, so much. I will be back very soon with another one. Um... I hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure you hit the like button and make sure you're still subscribed. I will see you very, very soon. Bye, guys.